Welcome to hashtag 13 nights of Samhain. Welcome to Pagan Crafting. I'm your host, Kara. Join me today as I rock one of the questions for the 13 nights of Samhain. So we're just going to jump right into the craft here. I have some vellum paper. I've designed these gothic doors with chat, GBT, and AI. And these doors I asked for a vampire motif with the red stained glass and then the purples with the moons. Very gothic, very old world doors. I even specifically designed the shape so it looks super cool coming up the side of the candle. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out our gothic doors. Grab some Mod Podge. Now you can grab a gloss or a mat. I'm going to use a gloss because I think it'll look a little bit cooler with the project I have planned ahead. But matte will work with this quite well. You do want to give it a healthy coating because you don't want to go back again. The vellum does suck up the paint. Now you're going to see in the beginning of this film, I did use seven day or seven hour candles. And I wound up going, oh my gosh, you're not going to see the effect that I want. I want to be able to see the light shine through the stained glass of the doors. Well, I'm going to have to wait a heck of a long time until that candle wax burns down. So what I did the next day, well, I realized this because it's, uh, I wound up melting the wax down in a great big spaghetti pot. Well, and I turned on the water, put the whole candle in there, melted the wax, made another candle out of the excess wax, and saved the glass. And I actually remade these candles <laughs> just so I can get the effect so I did not have to wait. Because I'm an impatient Aries and I don't want to wait seven hours or seven days to do that. So now we're going to like blacken up the base now I wish I had a smaller base but I'm trying not to go out and buy stuff all the time so I'm just going to use what I had in the house now it is Halloween time in Canada and the United States North America Mexico and so there's lots of little skulls you can buy so I've been uh, stocking up on the skulls and I didn't, I could not find any black lace for the life of me. So I bought some white lace and I dyed it with ink. So it looks a little crusty here, but that's because I had to use a lot of ink to get it to dye. I, I could have just gotten coloring for it, but that would have been too easy. Again, I use with what I had. Using some hot glue. To secure it into place we're not going to see that because we're going to hot glue it at the back of the candle i couldn't measure this probably would make my life easier but this works just as fine too and it works out quite nicely and you're going to see i'm going to have black all over my fingers because the lace was still like it just finished drying yesterday so no matter how much I handle it, I, again, I had to use a lot of ink to, to dye or to color, color that lace. <laughs> My first attempt, it was a beautiful silver that turned out, but I was really hoping for the black. So I, I attempted it again and wasted a lot more ink. Again, using what I had around the house. Oh, my fingers, but that's okay. And that should stay quite nicely. Oh, that's so pretty with the purple and the moons. I like it. And the vampire door. So now we're going to mark a center point. I marked a little center point with a little pencil. And I'm going to see if I, how many skulls it's going to take to go around. I do want them spaced out evenly, so hopefully it should work out for eight of them. And I think it'll work. Yay! 
That'll look cool. All right, next we're going to hot glue these little puppies down. Get the other ones sorted out, but we're going to hot glue them down in just a moment while I'm jumping ahead in my commentary. Those would be a cool effect. Now, it doesn't matter what color their skulls are because we're going to paint them momentarily. Just going to go around one by one and just glue them down. I'm not going to glue down the candle because I'd like to make the candle different kind of doors and mix them up and I have some other plans to do with this vellum paper as well. But I would like these little candle bases, these candle sconces. What would you call these? Not sconces. Those go off the wall. Candle. Halloween decor. I don't know what to call it. Anyway, we'll call it that. Just taking off the excess glue. I got them everywhere. But those look, those don't look too bad even just by themselves too. But we're going to paint them black. So just get the black in there as much as you can. Do a couple coats if you have to, if you have anything see-through. But just let it dry and you'll have spots that you see and you need to touch up anything. And I'm just using a flat black, just an acrylic craft paint. Super easy. It's going to go over the wood and the plastic. Now that that's dry, we're going to grab some metallic red paint. So beautiful. And if you actually blob outside like I just did right there, don't try to fix it up. Just leave it, let it dry, and go back in with your black paint and just do a fine line and just clean that right up. And when it dries, you will never be able to tell that you went outside the lines. Unless you like coloring outside the lines, you chaotic people, you, you go right ahead. But now that all the eyes and the nostrils are colored in, I'm grabbing a little fan brush, or you can grab just any old trash brush you'd like. Dabbing off the excess, using red metallic paint here again, I'm going to dry brush over top of the skulls around the eyes, the sockets, the nose, the teeth. And it's going to bring out all the lines that were there before. Ooh, so cool. I didn't really get to see those too much when they were white skulls. There's a lot more detail around the teeth that I was surprised it had too. So cool to see that pop out. And if you're not quite comfortable with dry brushing, you can like just dry brush it a little bit onto some paper towel before hitting it. I want to go back in with a second coat and darkening up my red a bit more. I want it to pop a little bit more when the lights are off and just the candles are on. So you can grab a clear gloss spray paint, which I tried first, but when I sprayed it, it was a little cold out. So it actually dulled and didn't stay glossy. So I went back in with a Maj Podge gloss, high gloss glue. Now these roses here, I locked out. I got them at a thrift store. I, I don't know why are they from a wedding or something. I don't know. But I thought if I have enough, I'm going to have a little look here and do red, red, black, red, black, red, black between each of the skulls. So I'm just going to just jump ahead here for a little bit before I glue it down and make sure I'll have enough for both of the candle holders. And by the count, I think I should be okay. So I'm going to rock a little bit of the hot glue on the stem as well as the leaves and a little bit on the flower. I want it to more uh, stick to the flower than seep too much. And we're going to do a little rinse and repeat for each of the flowers. You don't need too much. 
Again, you try to, when you're pushing it between the skulls, try to push down a little bit so it's not going to stick to your candle that you have inside that too. You could use any type of candle you'd like as well. If you have different, if you have wider ones, make your skulls a little bit wider. Whatever the size of your candle that may be. Yeah, I think that's what it needed. It needed some roses, skulls and roses. Girl's best friend. Yes, I love that vellum paper. I can't wait to show you with the lights on. Let's go have a little look on my altar. So this is with the lights on. I have tea light candles inside. And my idea worked. It has the beautiful vellum paper with the stained glass gothic vampire doors. I love it. Let's look at the with the lights off now. Even better. I'm so excited how this project worked out. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today as we had fun doing a little bit of a, some art magic with some candle magic. And for tomorrow we have, oh, this one's another really cool one too. October 26th, share your favorite recipe for this season. Oh, my recipe changes a little bit every year, but it's still good nonetheless. Because I really... I'll have to write down the recipe as I make it this time so I can share it with you. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> See you tomorrow.